Paddy Power, sponsors of the Road to Cheltenham. Well, it's time for the first of four Road to Cheltenham wraps after the first day of the 2024 Cheltenham Festival. And it was dominated, not quite as much as William Evans and Paul Townend would ideally have won, but three out of four ain't bad. State man winning the champion hurdle, the most important one, obviously. Bit of a, a sort of workmanlike performance, though, wouldn't you say? Yeah, it's funny. I was doing something before race and someone was asking me about how far would he win. And then when I went looking at State man, he does never win far. Four lengths, five lengths, four lengths, a maiden hurled by seven, I think. Statement just does what it says on the tin. He's like, he's never flashy, he's never flamboyant, but he just keeps winning. And he's just, that's what he is. He's just very workmanlike, very consistent, very professional, and very good. Nine grade one wins, so it's right that his name is on the trophy. Um, a steadily run race, testing yeah. ground, probably not to see him to best effect, perhaps. No, but I'd say Paul called it right. I mean, Willie was surprised that Paul rode him maybe as far back as he rode him, but I'd say he got it right. When you looked through them, outside of Lucia, who was the fastest horse in the race, was Stateman. Mm -hmm. And Paul rode him for speed, and he, he got it bang on. I mean, he didn't want to get into a tussle with Irish, with Irish, Point. Irish Point, and he rode him for speed. and. Yeah, it was a very confident ride and he nailed it. Willie Mullins racing afterwards, he wonders whether Cheltenham is really state man's bag. Is it a bit too early to say that? I mean, he's won a county hurdle. Clearly, he's a grade one winner, he should have done, but... Yeah, uh, no, I, I don't know. Maybe the undulations, do they suit him? Uh, maybe, possibly. I'd never thought of it, actually. No, well, it was just raised afterwards. Something to think about, something that we will be thinking about, hopefully, this time next year, when a certain lossy now might be coming back for the champion hurdle herself. She was a very short prize to win the mayor's hurdle and she did so straightforwardly. She did and uh, again Paul very confident on her but look it was it was the plan from a long way out for her that you know she wouldn't run until after Christmas. You give her time, let her develop and hopefully she could mature into becoming a champion hurdle mayor without ever over facing her and that look it's going to plan so far. It hopefully is. she keeps going and progresses into next year but you know a lot of people are saying oh she should have been this year but you have to give horses the chance to be themselves, to, to grow, mature, and be the best that they can. And overfacing horses at times sickens them. And we've learned that. And I'd say Willie is fairly happy with the path he's chosen. And hopefully next year he'll be proved right. I was saying to Paul Townend afterwards, hopefully this time next year he'll have a very difficult choice. Because if so, that means the season has gone right for both of them. Yeah, exactly. But um, yeah, it, it will. And, you know, I'd imagine if I was Paul, I'd be sitting home in a week's time thinking, how do I keep them apart until I have to. <laughs> yeah, he was very satisfied with his work here, being yeah. able to win both grade ones. He also won the grade one Arkel with Gaelic Warrior, the horse that entered that race at the last minute. We have been pouring over this horse of huge ability with that quirk in him, two quirks, how he behaves and also how he jumps. Yeah, and he didn't behave himself well in the parade ring. But yes, he in did. the leopard stand though, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, I actually didn't, really saw him twice coming into shot and he was dancing, but going to post, he was very relaxed, whereas he was in that leopard stand. Um, and he behaved himself really well in the race. I was a doubter, much to the angst of my wife, who, <laughs> who was the dam. But um, yeah, I was a doubter, but he, he proved me wrong, and I was pretty happy to be proved wrong, Lydia. The setup of the race, I think, really suited Santos and Davis and Matata being able to go forward, him being able to get a lead. And by about the second fence, he was settled pretty well and jumping quite straight. Yeah, straight, settled, went right once or twice, nothing dramatic. No. And uh, yeah, he, the hood worked on him, definitely. It, it did. Uh, they, they tried it in him and felt that he, he jumped straighter for it. Is he a champion chase horse? Have oh, we tried all the different that's distances? That's a big question, isn't it? Yeah. Could he be? It's hard to say he's not, but he's definitely throwing his name into the hat to be a, possibly be one. It's, I imagine it's very satisfying for the team because this horse has such huge ability. No, it's ability. not satisfying at all. Because Casey's been saying it all oh, goddamn year, and now he's just going to keep reminding us. Oh, so really? actually, yeah, uh, you know, you know when someone's going to really need you about something. Uh, I can't that, imagine that, that. That's what we're going to get. So, no. <laughs> right, I was right. I was right. Yeah, I was right. You wouldn't listen to me. Yeah. <laughs> now Henry de Bromhead has had an excellent day. Slade Steele, a really important winner of the opening supreme. That was the race that William Mullins couldn't quite win. Mystical Power finishing second. Sully Hill further down the field. But Slade Steele. I mean, we got this the wrong way around, didn't we? We, we were thinking Valley Burn Supreme. Slade Steele uh, for the Valley War. Now Gallagher. Yeah, but we learned 
just said they'll win and have his hurdles in Cheltenham next year, <laughs> rather than say which ones. Um, that was a great performance, though, because brilliant. he got the last, not as well as Mystical Power, and got back up. Got right underneath it, and then took off to go and beat Mitz, uh, Mystical Power, who ran a cracking race as well. Bally, or not Bally, or Tully Hill absolutely blew out. Um, but it was a really good performance from Slade Steele. And look, he's caught our eye all year, Lydia. Yeah. From Nace to Navin to Leperstown, um, and he went and delivered today, and he was impressive, really impressive. He was. I was asking Rachel Brackmore afterwards what she thinks he might be. She was talking maybe Gold Cup in a couple of years' time. She's she got a dream, haven't you? Yeah. It's about the dream. Yeah, you absolutely have. And we should mention that Henry de Bromhead did as well as he could possibly be expected to do in the Mayor's Hurdle. Second, third and fourth with yeah. Tell Me Something Girl, Hispanic Moon and yeah. Langtree and, Lady. And Rachel got it right. Yeah. She was second on Tell Me Something Girl and you know, that was a good call to go back hurdling with her. And uh, yeah, they got it right, but just ran into a really, really good mare. We should talk about the form of some of the major yards. Gordon Elliott has had, I know he hasn't been in the winner's enclosure. The flying. Yeah. The horses are in great form. It is going to happen at some sort of Absolutely time. Absolutely. Firefox flying. third, yeah. uh, founder 52nd. We've had the Irish Goffer Point. running really well. Irish Point, absolutely. He didn't stay at a Goffer. Yeah. No, he didn't, did he? No, he didn't stay last year either. No. Are you think about it now? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then the flip side to that is Nicky Henderson, clearly. Jericho de Ruppany not going from a very from a very early stage. Ditto of Jericho Lord. Now Lucia's run really well, but his two mares and the mare's hurdle tailed off. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'd say they're. You don't want to see it. We're. I even feel bad highlighting it. Uh, I, I'd say it's an awkward situation for Seven Barrows. How do you know? How do you know which ones are like Lucia and which ones are like the others? Yeah. It's it's a really difficult situation, and uh, you know I. I I feel sorry for him, tell you the truth. I agree with you. Nick Henderson saying, obviously he'd scoped all of them beforehand, they were all fine, he's going to have to take it as he finds them yeah. and just make a decision horse by horse. We should mention Chianti Classico, a fabulous winner of the Ultima for Kim Bailey and David Pass, that great partnership and a second winner in the race. That's a Betis boy back in 1999. Yeah, and the smile. Uh, it meant a lot to David Pass and it was good to watch it. He was always in a great position. He held them and held them as long as he possibly could. Um, he ended up in front by default, uh, and at the last, he thought when he got a fraction high behind, oh, don't fall over on your head. He didn't, he stood back up and powered to the line. Young horse, improving horse, um, and I thought David Bass, yeah, Grand National, good shout. Well, he's thinking about that. Then we had Lark in the morning as well. Joseph O'Brien and JJ Slaven confessing that they were thinking, are we going to run with all that rain having fallen? Yeah, but that to me, I don't know, and I think he's listening to Willie from years and years ago. When you get to the races, the ground is the same for everyone. Yeah. <laughs> run them. Yeah. And they'll be thinking about Banbridge as well, but they're hoping to be able to run him in the Ryanair. And then we just ended with a lovely success for Corbett's Cross. Emmett Mullins winning it for his grandmother, the race run in her honour, Maury Mullins. You could nearly imagine, I was slagging with, with Gillian and a few of her cousins beforehand, you could nearly see Maureen in that one. Now. Willie's had a good day, Emmett could do it one. <laughs> <laughs> And Corbett's Cross, though, with Derek O'Connor on board, blaming himself for the last time. But this was so straightforward in the hood after a schooling session in it. And here, particularly over the last two fences, he was very good he indeed. He was a bit higher times in the middle, but he is a huge engine. A huge engine. That could be a springboard to top stay in grade ones next season, couldn't yeah, it? Yeah, you'd be hoping so. And you yeah. hope maybe we'll see the same from Factor Five tomorrow and we get a couple of arches to go and take on Gallop in the Champ. And all of you right in the world of national hunt racing again. <laughs> it really will. So that is day one for the Cheltenham Festival. I hope you enjoyed the racing. I hope you enjoyed the wrap. We'll be back again tomorrow. Paddy Power, sponsors of the Road to Cheltenham.